So how great is this? We have Rudy Rudiger on the podcast right now. And it was, I don't even know how many years ago that I was attending a conference and here he is, the keynote speaker at this conference. And I have the opportunity to hear him tell the story firsthand about what happened in the movie and how the movie got made. I'm so inspired. I have to figure out a way to sneak backstage to meet him because I brought the DVD, the Rudy DVD with me, just the cover of it. I wanted to get him to sign it. So you know, I, go, I cut through all the, the red tape and figure out my way how to get through security. I sneak backstage and there he is. And I go up with my marker, with my, with my um, DVD and I ask him if he could sign it, which you see right here in the background. And then uh, I grab a picture with him and I think what a great experience this is that I just met Rudy Rudiger, uh, who has one of the most inspirational movies ever. So I'm excited right now to actually introduce you to Rudy Rudiger. Welcome to Flashpoint, the Fire Inside podcast, featuring leadership and team building principles designed to ignite your inner fire. Now your host, international speaker and best-selling author, Frank Viscuso. Very excited to introduce Rudy Rudiger onto Flashpoint, the Fire Inside podcast. Rudy, welcome to the show. No, welcome. And thank you for, hey, being part of your show. That's awesome. Yeah, well, uh, listen, I mean, you, uh, you, I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm excited. So, good, good. Well, we actually met a, a long time ago. You were speaking at a seminar and, mm -hmm. and I snuck backstage just to meet yeah. you and take a photo. <laughs> All right. And I wanted to introduce you to our listeners they all know your story everybody's seen your movie i watched it with my kids just a couple weeks ago but let's start from the beginning if you don't mind talk about growing yeah. up in illinois as one of 14 children yeah you know again that's that's a blue collar culture i was in uh catholic that was the thing to do have children and uh, lots of them and uh dad worked three jobs and mom was a she was the queen of the house so we grew up with seven sisters, six brothers. So that in itself, you, you learn how a lot of different things about um, communication, uh, collaboration, teamwork, all that. You learn that within the family. And you also learn that hard work does pay off, grit and grind, and, and less is more. You learn all that through the process. So growing up in Joliet, blue collar, Catholic, you got some goofy thoughts along the way. And then you had to get rid of those goofy thoughts. Grew up in a Catholic education. They gave you a lot of layers of goofy thoughts. Uh, but that's how they were taught to teach with fear. And uh, fear was a big motivator for them to teach us with. So to me, it didn't motivate me. <laughs> it discouraged me. So make a long story short, I had to get through all that. And getting through that was a mindset. In your mindset, you have to re evaluate it, reamp it in a positive way. Uh, you gotta eliminate a lot of this stuff that they threw at you. And it just happened to be in the Navy when I went in the Navy and uh, it really helped. So I learned from the past, I didn't live in the past, if that helps. It, it helps a lot. The movie actually depicted you as a <clears throat> dreamer, not a doer. Was that an accurate? Well, well, a dreamer, but a protector. My family was a protector. The reason was, is because my father's father lost his farm, the dairy farm, through a disease. And they were dreaming about having more cattle, more milkers. And they lost everything, their land, everything. So he was always afraid for his kids to go through that pain. So he protected dreams, especially big ones. I love, I've heard you speak before where you talked about your high school coach was what and what he did for you in terms of acceptance and encouragement. Uh, what did he do for you? Well, he, he was a encourager, not a... See, what he would do what was interesting. Most coaches tell you what you're doing wrong. This guy can tell you how he tells you what you're doing wrong. Rudy, you could do better. You could do better. Focus. We can do better because you're better. That encouraged me. Instead, what are you doing? That's not good. That's, see, that, that would, to me, that was taking my joy from me. What my high school coach did, he empowered me. I can do better. And that's the key. We can all do better. I like that about empowering. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, so I just want to talk about a couple of things in the movie. In the yeah. movie, and I've read your books too, but in the movie, 
there was an accident at the power plant. Mm -hmm. uh, was that something that you feel you needed in your life to help you step towards your dream well, and kind of step out of your comfort zone? It's funny that you said needed. I, we don't need that, but when it's presented to you, that's what you deal with. And, right. uh, and your faith takes hold, by the way. And, and by the way, some of the things he told me before he passed was don't live in regret. And that stuck to me. The other thing that stuck to me was he took shortcuts. He was in a habits. No matter what job you have, don't take shortcuts. And he took a shortcut that ended his life. And that's when I said no more shortcuts for me. And I gave my, my whole spirit up to the Lord at that point. I was a God believer, but not 100%. Now I'm 100% in the deal. And, and you, well, faith, my faith is what carried me through the tough times, knowing that good things will happen if you just keep forging forward and having that grit to grind and perseverance. But that was given to me from the family values. So it all came into place and eliminated the goofy thoughts, what people would say about you, how they saw you, instead of you seeing how you saw yourself. So that was a big deal. Yeah, yeah. When you say goofy thoughts, that's anything negative, anything well, that you think? Well, goofy thoughts are way out there, like uh, like if you can't see it, you can't believe it, they said. Well, i rather have the belief. I don't need to see it. I just believe it. that's me. I believe I'm going to do this, not hope I'm going to do this. I believe I'm going to do this. And, and they would say, well, you don't have this. And, you know, it doesn't matter what I don't have. It's what I'm going to get. It's what I'm going to do to get it. And that is a way of red flags. Stay away from those type of people for advice. <laughs> you know, they'll tell you what you're doing wrong. That's a bad coach, bad teacher, bad mentor. So I like the coach that let's go. We can do better. You know, that type of, and you always find that next level. I love that. I love how you said, you know, like your belief in yourself is greater than other people's opinions. Absolutely. Yeah. Because their opinions don't matter. It's not what God made you special. It's how you look at yourself. And that's what came about when my friend died. That's, that's the light that hit me. I am somebody. I am not going to live in regret. And I am going to go after my dream. Now, the dream was a fantasy to most people, but it was real to me. I just had to figure out what, what, what's, what's the road? What's, what's the path? Which, you know, what's the process? You find it out by going towards it. And well, let's talk about that now. What was it like when you first stepped on the campus at Notre Dame? Well, it, it empowered me. Got rid of all my negative thoughts. And it made, made me believe I can do this. I didn't look at the valedictorians or the size of kids how smart they I looked at, hey, I looked at the energy that that place gave me. It was very positive energy. And I had it and I wouldn't let go of it. You couldn't take it from me. I fought for that. I think we're similar in a, quite a few ways. One of the ways is that I believe that people are put in my path for a reason. I know you believe in that too. And, it, you know, as a perfect example, Father Kavanaugh, mm -hmm. you end up meeting him when you're trying to figure out. Well, he, he just happened to be there. And by the way, he was a little senile. At okay. the time. He was an older guy. So he only understood Holy Cross the seminary, not Holy Cross College. So we flip-flopped that in the movie so we could put the Holy Cross Seminary there. Okay. It was Holy Cross College. I was already rejected. I want to know what I need to do. I need to talk. What more do I need to do? So we had to flip-flop that. We're taking too long. But that's what you call movie making. Right. You keep the spirit of the story, but you have to change some, some real facts. And Father Kavanaugh is the one who really got me to the next priest and the next priest. So he was a very important person. In 1974, you finally went admission into Notre Dame. Yeah, well, that was through a lot of relationship building. Uh, every time you got rejected, I, I didn't say, wow, why'd you do this? You go there and say, what more do I need to do? That, that, then they really get to know you. And when they see you in your application, they said, this kid's going to make it. He's got the determination. And that's what they want to see. Yeah, I think in anything, even coaches yeah. at any level want to see that attitude and, and effort. That's what Eric Barsegian saw when I showed up in his office. He didn't see my speed, my sight. He saw my determination. And I was in the Navy. He was in the Navy. So I knew I had some leadership skills. Yeah, well, and that's pretty awesome because – 
we often talk about that when you in our armed forces work pretty hard to instill core values and leadership skills. And many people in just coming out of college, going to work, maybe not don't get those experiences, but you make the practice squad. I always wanted to ask well, you, you don't make, you yeah, don't make, the, you don't make the practice squad. Okay. You contribute. You contribute. <laughs> you contribute to the practice squad. Well, I mean, but what is it like? Do you do you go there? You're a walk on. Do you just go? Do they well, say well, on this day? What, well, at, yeah, this is interesting. You're asking us. Walk ons were not really accepted then. Okay. Because uh, you had all their scholarship players. You were like an intruder. You're like, why are you out here? We already have our guys. So you have to go up and and you have to sacrifice yourself basically to these guys. It was humbling, but at the same time, you were you didn't know, but you were helping other kids on that football team that wanted to quit, that didn't quit, that saw you work hard. Why can't I work hard without saying it? Leadership comes through many different levels, by the way. Uh, it doesn't come through verbally, it comes through action. And, uh, and they picked up on that. So, yeah, you contribute to the practice squad, and you had a choice whether you wanted to keep contributing. <laughs> yeah, because I'm sure you, you, yeah. it's a lot more difficult than it may oh, appear. Yeah. It's like every day I say, why am I out here? This is stupid. Were, were there any other kids uh, on the team at that time that were around your size or was everybody just a monster? Oh, well, yeah, the halfback for small. Yeah. You know, but lineman, I was a lineman. So I was, you know, you don't pick a five foot six guy to play defensive end, right? Yeah. Well, that's the only place I could fit in. Uh, you just go wherever they put you. I never really had a position to that final game. Okay. Where they put me. Uh, but, hey, whether you're on defensive end, defensive tackle, linebacker, you have to key the ball. That was the key the ball. Move on the ball. When the ball moves, you move. A lot of people anticipated moving the ball, on the ball. And mm -hmm. they would, you know, move off sides. And, and all. if they just focus on the movement, They'll be fine. Then their anxiety won't go in other directions. So that's what I learned at practice was focus. Well, let's talk about this game that you just mm -hmm. mentioned, the game, the, the climax of the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have a player or two. In a movie, I know there's, there, it's the team, but in real life you had talked about that. There was a couple players that offered their jersey in place of yours. Well, the one, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Talk about no, that. No, 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 no. What, what actually happened was there was a captain of the football team. Okay. And just to give you a little background so you understand this, Eric Parsegian told all seniors he would dress for their final home game. If you come to practice every day and commit to this team, you will dress for your, for your senior home game. Well, that changed when he left and a new rule came in oh. with the NCAA. They cut that down to 60 instead of 110. So that means 50-some kids aren't going to dress. That's crazy. Right. But yet, their new coach comes in, and he doesn't like walk-ons. <laughs> you know? So now, because of who I was and the respect I got from the other coaches, they kept me on the team, and they brought me back for the my senior year, which was an honor, and I was just humbled by that, uh, the fact that they brought me back. Uh, and, and that created a little more respect with the new coaching staff coming in. It's not easy starting over. Um, um, having right. that, that, that one fact taken away from you that you're going to dress for the front, now that's taken away. Do you still go to practice? Yes, because you committed to what? The team. Whether you play or not doesn't matter. You committed to the team, Rudy. And that's what I had. And but, hey, every day I had to get reminded of that through friends or through people. Uh, the janitor was a great example. Uh, his little moment was worth it. In the movie, we created a bigger moment, but he only had a small moment that was a big moment. Hmm. And the captain that went in to tell Divine and tell Coach Yanto, this Rudy guy should dress. Uh, is there one kid that would give up his uniform? And Pat Sarb did because he already dressed. It was his senior day. He would love to. For, but he get, he sacrificed his spot for me and allowed me to dress. That's how that happened. Have you ever been in contact with him since? Oh yeah, we yeah, absolutely. His son ended up at Notre Dame wearing number forty five as a walk on. He's a he's a big doctor today. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
what, what yeah. does it feel? What does it feel like when you finally get to run out of that tunnel with that team? Well, good. It's very surreal. You you can't explain it unless you do it. I can't tell. You know, I say, "Hey, man, I'm in Yankee Stadium. Just hit a home run. What's that feel like? Go right. do it, and you feel it. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's awesome. It's incredible. That's all I could say. It's a uh, you're fr running out of that tunnel in front of sixty thousand people screaming for all those kids, and you're one of them. It's really cool. That must be. So this is the, the, one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to have you come on here and talk to our listeners and introduce you this part of the story, because the movie, Rudy, is awesome. I mean, honestly, I, I, it, it's got to be one of the top three sports movies on everybody's list, if not number one. But how you were able to get the movie made, in my opinion, is equally as impressive. Because how do you go to a movie producer and say, listen, I played 27 seconds, made one tackle. Would you like to make a movie about my life? Well, that, so, that didn't happen in Hollywood. Uh, so, so you didn't go there with a like a, a story written. No, you, you just went there to say, "I want to I tell went there people from inspiration from Rocky, the movie Rocky." Yeah. So I'm going to go out there and find out how he did his movie because <laughs> I want to do mine. Well, that's another story. <laughs> it's actually better than the movie getting a movie made. You're right yeah, with Rocky because yeah, you got Hollywood and Notre Dame that can deal with. Notre Dame, they don't want to do movies. And Hollywood only want to do movies that make money. So there you go. So you had no contacts at all? You just stopped yeah, buying a plane there, ticket and I'm going? Yeah, that's what I did and ended up in a Carnegie Deli. And I asked the maitre d' there, is there any producers hanging out here? He pointed to one and I went over and sat by him and started talking. And before you know it, he, I'm hearing all the things, how hard it is to get movies made and how difficult, and went in one ear and out the other. I said, thank you, and then I went out and kept telling the story. Ten years later, serendipities of life, it all comes together. So another part of the story that I really like is you, now you have a meeting set up with the man who wrote the movie Hoosiers. He mm -hmm. doesn't show up for the meeting, but you happen to run into a mailman. Can you tell yeah, that story? Yeah, yeah, he, um, Angelo, uh, he's a right? Rudy. He's a true Rudy. He, his family doctors and his family, he, he went against that grain and went out to be a writer. He always wanted to do a, be a writer and make movies. Well, his family, they couldn't see that in him. But he ended up doing some good things and, and, and he was finished with the genre of sports and wanted to do other genres. And that's when he met me and I was introduced to him by another friend that was uh, uh, a brother of a hotel manager. It just happened to be my last meeting with Notre Dame that they said that we're not interested. And that's when I met the hotel manager that introduced me to the brother that knew Angelo. So all that came into play, hotel manager, common man, a relationship, introduced me to uh, uh, his brother that knew Angelo from Indiana University. They put. Hoosiers together, he set up a meeting for Angelo, but me and Angelo, after I told him the story and I go out there and Angelo doesn't show up because one, he, he doesn't want to do another sports movie and he hates Notre Dame. That's what he told me when I met him because right. the mailman, the guy that was with me kept, you know, he kept saying, come on, man, he's not going to show up. And I'm going, yeah, he is. Give him another 10 minutes. Well, three hours later, he said, I can't handle another 10 minutes. I said, good. I'll be right back. So where are you going? I'm going to go find him. <laughs> <laughs> and he looked at it and said, really? He said, yeah. I walked outside to see a mailman, and I just thanked him for a smile, and we had a little communication, real positive. And then he says, what are you out here for? And I told him, and before you knew it, he said, hey, I know where that guy lives that you're talking about, follow me. And that's when I met Angelo for the first time. Now, this is how life works. You've got to be bold. you got to build those relationships. If I didn't go up and tell Eric Parsegian and show up in his office in the morning before I was even at Notre Dame that I wanted to come here and play football, but I was in the Navy, that paid a big dividend. Now, I go out to California because he was in the Navy, and that's where he saw character. And Angelo says, I'm not going to do another sports story. And I hate Notre Dame, but you have a good story. I hung on to that. But I also learned I needed to find out what he needed, not what I needed, because I sold insurance for eight years. So I knew that culture. 
So I used all those principles with Angela. <laughs> so two years later, which again, this boldness of going out and finding him paid off that dividend. It was a gentleman at uh, Orion Pictures that went to uh, Cornell, became a filmmaker, was an executive at Orion, and actually put Hoosiers together. Because of that success, he got a two picture deal at Columbia Pictures. And the president of Columbia Pictures was a president. The president went to Michigan State. He was a walk on, but he wanted to go to Notre Dame, got turned out. No one knew this, but life works this way. It's all about being positive and connecting the dots. And you don't know what dot you connect unless you move forward. People come into your life when you're positive, you will attract that. So, because of that two picture deal, he had. Uh, a sports movie to do in, in another comic relief movie, the sports movie called in Angelo and David, the director. Now, how would they have known about my movie, about my story? They would not, not known if I didn't knock on their door. Right. So that was the dividend. Rob, the producer says, Rob Fried says to Angela, do you have a sports movie in mind? I have X amount of dollars and I can commission you to write it, you have one. He told him the Rudy pester in this pest. <laughs> this guy just shows up. He wasn't supposed to be at nobody. And it's a father son relation. He says, write it. That's how quick it went. It took me nine years to get that. At two minute deal. Then they write it and they approve it right away to film it. But I didn't tell them what Notre Dame did. They said, no, I didn't tell them that. Because of that, now this is important. Yeah. This is why you do what you need to do. Don't worry about why you're doing it. Just do it. And what I realized was all these dividends are paying off now uh, because I didn't tell the producers that Notre Dame said no. They wrote a beautiful script. Now they're ready to film it. The only reason they're filming it is because Frank Price approved it. But there was one more obstacle involved in getting that thing approved. Frank Price gets fired from Columbia, new president comes in, he does not like the script. It trashes it, goes in turnaround. Well, the guy at, from Orion is now an executive. This was his baby. He took it right over to TriStar Picture, the sister company, and they went for it. That's how it happened. I mean, that's the long short of it. Yeah, but, but it's amazing because there's so many spots there where somebody could just stop and say, this isn't gonna happen. Well, and that's you why just you keep going. going. Remember, you just keep going because you. Not, if I didn't find a janitor, I never found Rob Free. Hmm. Now, listen, you've inspired me. You've inspired millions of people with this movie, with your story that the movie depicts, as well as being able to get the movie made. Mm -hmm. I heard you share a story about how one time you were attending a L.A. Lakers Sacramento Kings game, your daughter singing a national anthem. Oh, the late Kobe Bryant, yeah. The late Kobe Bryant. Can you talk about what he said to your daughter? Yeah, I mean, that's important uh, because you never know. You, you do the movie, you never know who this is going to reach. It has a good reach, I'm finding out. And uh, Kobe, who was out practicing before the, uh, the production team was out there with my daughter, he was out there shooting around the horn. And I noticed if he hit the rim, he goes back to the point where he started. He wants to swish every shot. I said, wow. And I just noticed that, but he didn't know I was sitting there until I acknowledged him and say, hey, Kobe, that's not whatever I said. I said, I'm Rudy. He said, Rudy, the real Rudy? I said, yeah. He just picked up on it like that. Yeah. The Rudy Rudiger? I said, yeah. All of a sudden, he comes over and he says, man, he says, is this your son? I said, yes. He says, uh, your father inspired me. He was, he's my hero. And uh, what do you say to that? I became the star to Kobe Bryant. Well, when he was 16 years old, his father showed him the movie. And his, what he got of that movie was real clear, simple, but powerful. Clarity, practice, prepare get better. Practice, prepare, and get better. If I do that for the next 10 years, where am I going to be? That's what you showed me. That's what you taught me. I said, wow. Because there's no excuse not to practice. There's no excuse not to prepare. There's no excuse 
not to keep doing what you're supposed to be doing. It's, it was a different leadership skill. But he's right. I didn't know I was going to give him that message through that movie, but it came through the different layers of messages we put in that movie. The movie's very biblical, by the way, just so. Yeah, I would agree with that yeah. as yeah. well. So if we have young people, actually anyone listening to this podcast right now, they're listening to Rudy Ruger mm -hmm. just shared his story. They have dreams, mm -hmm. but they just lack belief in themselves. Well, that's I've, the key. Got to get 100% their work on that. Everything else will fall in place. You can't go 94%, 98, 99. It's got to be 100%. Love it. How can people get in contact with you for... You go, for we, okay, I'm glad I'm doing your podcast. I'm so honored. Uh, they can you. go to Rise Above with Rudy podcast on iHeart, uh, Spotify, where, whatever they need to do, YouTube. Or you go to... To go to the Rudy Rudiger app. Get the Rudy Rudiger app. Uh, you can go to your app store and put Rudy Rudiger app in there and get the app and you can follow us. And and go to RudyInternational.com. That's how you can get in touch. I'm going to actually download that right now. Rudy, yeah. thank you so much for thank giving you. me this time. You look great. You're a true hero. Way to go, brother. Thank you. God bless you and have a good one. Thank you. You, you too, brother. Take right. care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.